We are live, rocking and rolling. Good morning, people. I uh, hope everyone is excited as I am today because it's Friday. It's Friday, and um, there's a lot of good things about Friday. Ron Stansbury, you're the first one in this morning. Wow. All right. Good to see you, Ron. Thanks for joining me. Uh, miss you guys. Got to figure out a way to, to see you guys soon. Jerry Crocker, good morning. Mark Fernandez, good morning. Boy, you guys are rocking, ready to go, uh, sitting there waiting at the 8 o'clock hour. Um, we are live. This is Art Talk, episode thir 13. I can't do it. Th 13, episode 13. Robert Smith, uh, thank you for joining me today on uh, Art Talk, episode 13. Got some, uh, some fun stuff today. Really cool stuff today. Get those juices flowing. Get that... Uh, that energy going. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Mark, see you at the Classic Auto Show. Yes, you will. Uh, Mark, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at your little icon there. It looks like it's a car. I don't know what you look like, so you're going to have to go up and wrap me on the head if you see me at the uh, at the show tomorrow. Kenneth Easterwood, very cool. Thanks for joining me. Let me know where you guys are, are, are tuning in from because this is live. We are all over the world. We are literally all over the world. Uh, we had people... Uh, a couple days ago, uh, obviously from Germany, we had one guy from South Africa, I found out later. Like, it's like the middle of the night or something there. I don't know what it is. Uh, have my coffee. Good to go. Donna Phillips, good morning. Okay. Thomas Rosenbaum, thank you for joining us. Uh, Dennis Burnham, what's up, Dennis? Oh, we got some good stuff going on. It's happening quickly. Uh, I, I like to not start right away. Uh, I had some anxious people the last time. I'd like to start not, not start right away because uh, we need to pe people to roll in. I don't want them to miss some of this stuff live to be able to ask questions. Greg Gill, good morning, Greg Gill. Safe travels to the OCCU Sunday at Wheels and Waves. Yes, Wheels and Waves is Sunday. And uh, Mark Fernandez says, gold 1960 Corvair, South Coast Corsa. Best Corvair club there is, right? Yeah, bar none. Best Corvair club. Okay, um couple things I want to say. Uh, number one, today is my mom's birthday. That's exciting for me. My mom passed away quite a few years ago. Miss her dearly. Uh, she was uh, certainly a, a tremendous inspiration for me, as our parents should be. Sorry about the hair there. It's kind of weird. Uh, Doug Harrison, good morning. But I love my mom uh, in ways that I can barely describe. And uh, I am as creative and as forthcoming and as passionate about what I do directly because of her. So uh, she pushed me. She was the, that person in my life that said, hey, you want something? Just go do it. Get over there. You know, we yeah, actually have a quick story. Uh, I used to swim a lot when I was a kid. And uh, in, in the family station wagon, we'd go to the, the swim meet and my mom would say, uh, hurry up and go get your first place medal because we got to go to the movies and we're going to sit in the car and wait for you. So she just naturally assumed that I would go down there and get first place. Uh, yes, our rest in peace, all moms. Yes, absolutely. Donna Phillips, good morning. Um, uh, but the one thing she said to me also was that don't let me find out that you raced against guys your age, which I thought was an interesting comment right? So she conditioned me. She conditioned my belief system uh, in that, that I always needed to push forward. I always needed to race against guys that were older than me, stronger, faster, so that I would push myself. And that was a, a really good thing. And that's going to lead us into today's talk, which is, which is good. But also, uh, we don't have this gentleman on board this morning yet, as I can see, but David Neal of the Murphy Museum. It's David's birthday today also. So wish David a, a happy birthday. Birthdays should be acknowledged, right? You know, if you guys have a birthday on, on the day that we're doing an art talk, let us know so everyone can give you a thumbs up. Pat on the back, you know, slap on the derriere, whatever it is that works for you. Okay, uh, intro. Uh, my name is Fireball. This is Art Talk, episode 13, where we try to help you guys uh, juice up your creative flow uh, as creative people in the universe, uh, on this planet, on this little tiny marble that's floating out in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's our job to create things and we can create a cup of coffee like this. We can create uh, art. We can create uh, new articles. This is the Malibu Surfside News, which is a, a paper that I write for. And uh, I just did an article on, um, I hope I can find this quickly for you guys. Uh, let's see. Sorry about that. I wasn't prepared. This is Steve Pierce at the Murphy Museum. This is his truck in 1946. Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? Right? So that just came out. Uh, that's what I do. I like writing about people and their cars. And uh, we got a lot more stuff coming 
uh, LA Parent. I just put a deal together with them. We're going to do a lot of stuff, Hidden Hills, all kinds of fun things. Okay, so that's that's our show. And uh, a quick update for the Fireball Gallery, which is May 11th. This is the launch of my new gallery at the Murphy Museum. It's going to be a world-class art museum featuring a minimum of six artists at a time. We want those guys to get all their, all their dues. We have... Um, uh, Wes from the Daily Driver Project. We have Chris Garcia. We have Chris Dunlop. We have street artists Bohemia Incorporated. Super cool. Uh, we have Johnny Martinez, and Johnny's probably going to join us any moment. And we have Joff Ambao, who Joff is a, a fantastic illustrator out of Art Center. Uh, some great guys. We're going to be featuring them. Good morning, Larry Hall. Thanks for watching. Uh, Tony Matthews. Yes, Tony. Good morning from the UK across the pond. Little swim heading across the pond. Uh, good to see you, uh, Tony. And um, uh, I hope you guys are staying cool over there. Nothing irritates me more than a phone call coming in at the same time. Okay, so um, uh, so that Fireball Gallery is really chugging forward. You got a lot of uh, neat stuff. That's Gallery 1, which happens in May, but Gallery 2 is already heating up. That's in September. We have actor uh, Tony Dow from Leave it to Beaver. He's one of the artists. But then Gallery 3 suddenly stepped in, uh, which is, I think... March of the following year, we already have six artists that are booked for that gallery showing. That's going to be an automotive street art event. These are street artists, you know, the guys that do big paintings and all that kind of stuff. Dan Jewell, uh, Emiliano Serpes, thank you for joining me today. So lots of great stuff going on with uh, the Fireball Gallery. And once again, finally, the Classic Auto Show is this weekend. I have an, a car that's being delivered in the next hour or so. It's going to be an epic car. It's going to be really, really cool. We're going to have this not only for the Classic Auto Show, but Wheels and Waves on Sunday and then all week long. So if you watch the vlog, if you haven't seen the vlog at FireballTim.com or on YouTube, we'll be featuring that car. Should I should I tell you what it is? Should I tell you what it is? Do you guys want to know what, what the car is? Thumbs up? No? Don't care? It's fine. We can move on. Okay. No problem. We'll move on. Okay. Uh, today's subject that what we're going to focus on is what do you believe? What do you believe? And uh, and that's an important thing to address because our belief systems is what makes us up. Oh, I'm seeing thumbs up. I'm seeing thumbs up. Uh, I got a Corvette showing up. I got a, I got a, a the vet. If you went to the Eliana show and you saw a, a Corvette that was on a platform that was their featured vehicle, it's showing up today. That's what I'm going to be driving. You guys are going to dig it. Okay, what do you believe? Um, the thing about our belief systems, is that it's directly reflected in our life, is that what we believe is easy to decipher. When you, when you, you meet someone for the first time and you talk about their life and, and understand you know, what's going on in their life, you can understand their belief system because according to their beliefs is what we manifest in our life. If I believe that, um, that I, I get sick a lot, then, then pretty much I'm always sick. If I believe that I'm, I'm wealthy or that I'm poor, then that, that gets reflected in and manifests in our life. And it's what's important isn't that we acknowledge that. What's important is we understand how that happens. Because if you understand how that happens, then you, uh, you can change things, which is really cool. You want to be able to change things. Because you are the master, the captain of your, the master of your captain fate, soul, whatever that quote is. You're, you're, the, uh, you're the head honcho, the, the, uh, the grand poobah of your life. And, and in order to take control and to, to, to have those reins and under control is uh, uh, you have to understand your belief system and how that works. You guys know the quote about uh, if, you, if, you, if you're holding on to the reins of a bunch of crazy horses, how do you control them? Anybody? How do you control all these crazy horses, these six, seven crazy horses? Did someone just sneak in? I think there's a ghost. Um, how do you control those things? How do you control them? You, uh, you let go. You let go. The way to control all those crazy horses is to let them, let them go, set them free. Uh, Charles Stoika, thank you for joining me today. Larry Oriol, very cool names. I like this. Cindy, good morning, Cindy from Nevada. Um, so uh, we have to have to learn to let go. But let let's take a take a step back for a second to understand why our belief systems work the way they do. How do you develop a belief system? Um, you know, you get introduced to an idea. Uh, you get interested uh, to an idea by your parents, by a friend, by advertising, and you look at that idea, that concept, and you say, hmm, do I believe in that, or, or is, that, is that a bunch of baloney? 
and then you determine that fact based on on seeing that and you say uh, that's true or that's not true and you and you get that belief system and then you reinforce that belief system by through repetition right talking about it you know you think that the are uh, the you know whether you like the president or you don't like the president um, uh, your belief system by repetition uh, it gets reinforced and then you you strengthen that repetition Larry says how do fireball light your appearance on gas yeah that was fun thanks for uh, joining us Larry uh, great guys Bob Beck and Randy Cardoon had a great time with talking with those guys always fun to act like a bunch of dorks on the radio it's very cool uh, first step in establishing you know I mentioned that you you lock yourself into a belief system by looking at an ideal uh, by something somebody says it's introduced to you and then you determine whether that that ideal is uh, something that you're going to accept in your life or something that you're going to repel and to keep away so over the years you you learn this without necessarily understanding what it is that you're doing you just accept these things well I accept that one I don't accept that one and I do accept this one I'm gonna reinforce that idea over and over again eventually it's gonna be a condition eventually it's gonna be a part of me then you can say I am this and you accept that right and and that's how it works and this is not a hard concept to understand I think all you guys understand that how that works the the problem that we face is that that you have to address, are those beliefs serving me? Are those beliefs um, addressing the problems that I'm, I'm faced with? Am I, am I growing or expanding because of my belief system or am I contracting? Am I, am I faced with, with challenges all the time? And you know, do I believe my boss is an asshole? And if he is, then and I would keep reaffirming that, then I'm gonna keep looking for that. The roles get reversed. Instead of him look, you know, in, in, the more that you push that out, that ideal out, my boss is an a-hole, my boss, my boss, my boss, the more he starts acting that way and the more you start noticing all those things. And that's, that's the thing, is you start to notice that stuff. And you're not in control. You're, at the, you're a victim to what it is that you see. And we wanna be able to change that. We wanna be able to change that so that you are in control of your life and you can start to manifest the things that you want to manifest. Um, vision for who you are, uh, is it good or bad? Right? Is it good or bad? Good morning, Johnny Martinez. See you this weekend at Costa Mesa. Come to my booth, Safe Travels. You bet I will. I'll come see you, Johnny. Everybody who goes to this, the um, the uh, Classic Auto Show, go see Johnny Martinez. Um, he's gonna he's gonna stripe your cheek or your glasses. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. But uh, go see him. He's cool. Um, uh, gonna have a good time this weekend. So you know, is the vision the belief system that you have for yourself, is it good or bad? Well, that's dependent on what you're focusing on. Is it good or bad with regard to your health? Uh, are you healthy? Because if you are healthy, then you have a belief system that supports health. And you do things and you think about health in a positive way. If you're health challenged, let's say you're going through a condition right now, maybe you're a little bit overweight, maybe you have uh, some issues with uh, you know, uh, parts of your body, and uh, and those aren't functioning properly. It's because your belief system about that thing, you have a little anxiety, a little bit of fear that's supporting that, that belief system. You're unsure, so you lack a little bit of faith about whether that's gonna change or how that's gonna change. And the way to change that is to stop looking at it from a victim standpoint and to start looking at it from a proactive, I'm gonna kick some ass standpoint. And you gotta change your attitude. You gotta you stop looking at it from here and start looking at it from up here, right? This is this is how we change things. Is we make a commitment. It's like, like screw that. Okay, I'm done with this. I'm not going to be doing that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, I'm going to be taking care of myself. And you make the decision. You just make the decision. I'm not screwing around here, guys. This is this is the answer for you. This is not not hard. It's not rocket science. This is very simple to understand. But it takes a tremendous commitment. Can you hear Kathy? She's making juice in the kitchen. Yeah. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. Okay, so that, you have to understand the mechanics of how it works, and then when you start to implement that, um, uh, things will change. The, the other challenge is, is that we don't see change right away, right? So it's hard to identify that it's working or not because uh, you you do all this work and it's uh, it's not changing, it's not changing, and you keep reinforcing it's not changing, I'm not seeing the change. And here's the commitment. This is the commitment that you need to, to, to do is that if it comes down to your life and health or comes down to a relationship that's important to you or comes down to being poor or being wealthy or being having enough money to do the things that you want to do uh, and be fulfilled, then you have to ask yourself, you know, what am I willing to do? And the answer has to be whatever it takes, period. 
whatever it takes. This is your life. You get 100 years and that's all you get. If you're lucky, you might get to come back as a, as a squirrel or something or, or a lamppost or something else. But this is your life. This is where you are. This is what you get. Stop screwing around and start getting busy. Okay? You guys hearing me today? Okay. This is Friday. I'm giving you the goods. Okay? So you have to determine, is it good or bad? Is it empowering you? Is it serving you or not? If it's not, time to change it. And this is the way you change it. You have to identify what do you want to be. If you're unhealthy and, and you're overweight, what do you want to be? You can't just say, I want to lose weight because you don't want to lose something because generally when you say, I want to lose something, we're always looking for what we lost. You want to, you want to release it. You want to release weight. You want to let it go right? You want to let that weight go. And you got to get busy. That means get off your ass and get on a bike or go to the gym or go for a walk or do something, but stop complaining about how difficult life is or how you're, you're overweight or however that is and get off your butt and go do something. Okay. This is how it works. So make a commitment, make a commitment in your soul, not in your mind, in your heart, in your soul that you need to change. Okay. That's how change comes. And by repetition, by thinking that way, like I'm committed, I'm committed. You have to learn that term, not the word, what it means. You have to understand and commit yourself to an ideal, to a vision. This is your life. Are you going to screw around and let it go and die at 78 years old? Or are, you know, my dad is 91. There's people that, that he is, he's living with that are centenarians. They're in, a, they're in a, their hundreds. I'm 54. I'm at the halftime show right now. Maybe, maybe I'm at the halftime show, unless by the time I get to be 100, you know, we've expanded that. You know, you guys know the story of the three-minute miles or the four-minute mile. I don't know how many minute miles it is, but there's always the oldest person on the planet, which let's say he's 117 right now. Somebody somewhere is going to make it to 118, right? You know that. At some point, someone's going to make it to 118. And then just when he does that, he's going to get all pissed off because someone right behind him is going to get to 119, right? The goal is that it's limitless. There is no rules. There is only belief systems, okay? And your belief system is either serving you or it's deserving you. Make sense? Okay. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Lawrence. What's up, buddy? Um, so what do we want to be? Of course, you have to identify. You got to know where you're going. You have to know where you're going. I want to lose weight. I want to make more money. I want to, you know, whatever it is that you want to do to make your life better. Now's your chance. It's Friday. You got the weekend. You can take Saturday and Sunday. Commit yourself to, to making your life better one day at a time, one brick at a time, okay? Uh, you change. You change your belief system by identifying that new belief and through repetition, through clarity, you know exactly where you're going, through your persistence, you know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta figure out a way that that drives you forward. Whether it's a cup of coffee, whether it's friends that reinforce your belief systems, whether it's getting rid of toxic people. We all got toxic people in our life. We gotta get rid of those those a holes. You know, they don't know they're a holes. I can't really judge them. They don't know that they are causing, holding you back, right? Good morning. morning. What is this? Carrot, apple, celery, lemon. Carrot, apple, celery, lemon. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Mm. Oh, you guys got to try this. If there was a way for me to tip that to you guys, I would do it. Oh, delicious. Really good. Okay. Persistence. We talked about that. Faith. Faith, that's a big one. Not religious faith. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I believe this so strong, there is nothing that's going to mess with me. Nothing's going to change this, right? Uh, Chris Moody says, I believe I will make it happen. And if I come back as a lamppost, I hope it's not this one. And he gave me a link. <laughs> Chris, you're a kook, man. You're a kook. That's just the way it is. Um, uh, lampposts provide light for people. Not a bad thing to come back as, right? Okay. Faith. Um, how do you increase your faith? How do you increase your faith? Uh, you guys know how to do this. You guys know how to increase your faith. It's whether you will or not. Are you driven to increase your faith? To talk to people that empower you? To listen to videos? To watch things like Art Talk? To get your ass moving? Right? You have an opportunity to do that. You got to get rid of the stuff that's holding you back. Those toxic people and toxic situations, whether it's a job or whether it's a person or whether it's the grandma saying blah, 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 whatever it is. And then you got to reinforce those things that are good for you. Okay. 
And, and then you got to do things throughout the day to keep you present. So it allows you to repeat that belief system in your mind, to visualize it, to meditate on it, to, to focus on it, to concentrate on it. Kathy and I are about to go take a hike. We're going to shoot a vlog at the grotto in Malibu. Lots of water. It's going to be spectacular. That's what we're doing today. Uh, she's making sandwiches as well as juice. Um, and, uh, and that's the deal. That's the deal in a nutshell. Does that make sense for you guys? Michael Jackson, uh, thank you for joining me, Michael T. Jackson. Uh, let me know where you're joining us. Once again, this is Art Talk at 8. I'm here for you mothers. I'm here to tell you the goods. I'm here to get your creative juices flowing, to get you flowing into the weekend. I'm not messing around here. I'm committed. I'm committed to you guys to, to make sure your lives are better by you practicing some of these things. My life is better because I've been doing that, and it gets better every, every day. I said every twice. That's how powerful it is. Every, every day. I want you to research a psychologist, a French psychologist that existed uh, 100 years ago. His name is Emile Kou. C-O-U-E. Emile Kou. Check him out. Uh, Google him online. Um, every day and every way, my life gets better and better. If I repeat that to myself, what happens? Well, I'll tell you what's happened. Things get pretty freaking cool. People are delivering freaking Corvettes to my door. That's how cool it is. Okay? Lots of great stuff. If you guys want that kind of stuff, you guys want something good to happen, you got to get in gear. You got to stop screwing around. You got to stop screwing around with toxic people and toxic situations and commit yourself to this ideal. Okay? All right. Outro of the Porsche book is booking along. We got five sketches so far. We're getting closer to our, our due date of April 1st. Uh, it's not an April Fool's joke. I can, I'll just, it'll come out April 2nd just to commit, just so that nobody knows. Okay? Uh, Nigel Brunt, thanks for joining me. Uh, today's Art Talk, episode 13. Uh, working on these books, getting them out to you guys. We got Wheels and Waves. This weekend, we got actor Michael Madsen, who's going to be bringing a couple of cars to Wheels and Waves on Sunday. So if you got nothing to do, you want some free coffee, free Hot Wheels, join us. Happy St. Patty's Day. Of course, thank you, Ron. Uh, make sure you wear some green um, underwear, because I'm going to be pinching. You know what? I don't even know if I have a green shirt, because... I, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. Um, I may, I may not. Um, okay, so uh, that's all I have for you guys today. I love you guys. I mean it. I mean it. I'm here for you. I'm committed to this as best I can. It's the weekend, so there's not going to be an art talk on the weekend. We got two car shows to do. Going to have a spectacular time. We're going to be doing some Facebook Lives for sure. So check us out. Have a spectacular weekend. It's up to you. If you believe it's going to be a spectacular weekend, then guess what? It is. See you later.